When I was a little child, I wanted to be an explorer. I wanted to see the great wildernesses of the world. So as soon as I had money, because I had a job, I took to traveling. And one of my first trips was to the island of Madagascar. And instead of seeing lush jungle, this is what I saw on my arrival. Even though people had only been living there for a thousand years, they had succeeded in completely deforesting the island. And when I finally arrived at my uh, jungle spot, it was a little square in an, a sea of this uh, denuded landscape. And people were nibbling at the edges, farmers were nibbling at the edges because they had to feed their children. I believe we need the wilderness. We need the wilderness to remind us who we are and where we come from. And I also believe we need space for all the other creatures to live. So there was the kernel to decide that I wanted to devote uh, my time to stabilizing world population. And one of the shocking statistics I found was that indeed, of all the children born, about 40% in this world are unplanned. And about half of them, 20%, is actually unwanted. And unwanted is a very bad start in life. Unwanted means you have little chance for love, for food, for education, and you have quite a high chance to end up in either child prostitution, crime, these children form an extra burden on our societies and uh, they exacerbate the problem. So I decided that every child should be desired and that that was my goal. So why do we react so vehemently against unwanted children? Well, we know that from a large part of our literature, we've, uh, societies have always rejected unplanned mothers and children. Somehow, this reaction has been ingrained in us. So why do we still get unwanted children? Well, one of the reasons is that sex and rational thought don't go well together. They're very bad, bad fellows. So I decided if I wanted to create new contraception, it needed to be passion-proof. The other thing is that most of the people here probably think that somebody else is more disciplined than they are, and they would love to be as disciplined as that person. And in fact, we are not very disciplined. From all the women using the pill in America, about one third doesn't use it regularly enough so you can talk about real safety. So the other thing we need is something discipline free. Thinking about this further was that uh, cash and discipline are in short supply, and we also add a lot of hormones to our current contraception. Uh, the Pill is a contraceptive device. Most IUDs, Spiratje for the Netherlanders, uh, remember that one, <laughs> it's going to come back, uh, the, uh, are, uh, contain hormones. My daughter has just uh, started using the pill and she doesn't like it. It has effects all over her body. So that's the trouble with chemicals in our body. Huh? They don't just work in one spot. So I decided that this thing should contain no hormones it should be a mechanical solution. The other thing uh, I realized was that on a lot of our bodily openings, we have muscles. We have sphincter muscles. And we can decide when we eat, we can decide when we drink, we can decide when we pee, we can decide when we defecate. We can even stop breathing, albeit not for a, a very long time. The only thing we can't close off are our reproductive channels. And we have no choice in that matter. So why is that? Because here, however much we want to be in harmony with nature, I think our ways differ. Because nature typically starts with abundance, followed by discarding the unsuccessful, like these victims of the bubonic plague. This is not a solution we want to have uh, imposed on us. We want to have that choice. So, this is how our project came into being. Choice every child desired. We uh, decided to create, to try to create ideal birth control. And this ideal birth control should be for women. I know we're putting the burden on them again, but the problem is all these unwanted children are usually the burdens of the women. And it's very important that we free this, these women from this cycle of responsibility 
uh, for children you didn't want to have in the first place. So we built a team of medical technologists, gynecologists, uh, engineers, different companies, different professors, and started this project, looking for a way to create the sphincter muscle in exactly this place. And it should be a solution which is as easy to implant as an IUD, there you have it again, uh, and be completely trouble-free and no impact on the body. In fact, you shouldn't have to think about it. It should be something that gives you the silent confidence. I will have no babies or I will have them if I choose to. So, what did we actually create? This is the valve, which is very open, a very little obstruction to eggs and ovum. And behind there, you see a motor that's lying completely in the wall of the cylinder. We've got patents on that, and, uh, but to tell you how difficult this all is, because it looks really nice on CG, but I've got a rice kernel in my pocket. It's very hard to see here, I think. Uh, the, adva the advantage of this rice kernel is that I can actually flip it on stage because I won't do that to my prototypes that we've just made to a, for a huge amount of money huh? because we've created valves that are so small that they are five thousandths of a millimeter tight and we have actually proved that we can separate sperm and ovum, that we can create valves that are closed to in the reproductive channels. So. Uh, here's the real thing close to my finger. You can see how small it is. So, what's the whole plan? What would a life with choice actually look like for a woman? Uh, the idea is that, let's say at 18, she goes to a clinic or a medical post. This is a relatively small fare. It's completely comparable to placing an IUD. And uh, then it's closed, and let's say at 22 she, needs some, she meets a nice fella, and at 24 they decide to have a baby. So they go to the medical post, the woman puts an antenna belt on her tummy, and the antenna begins to send energy into these tiny rice kernels. The rice kernels accept this energy, and they begin to turn and they open up the valves, at which time a woman has a completely normal reproductive system. So she gets her first child, and let's say at 26 she closes them again because she wants to take care of this first baby. And a couple of years later, she and her husband decide to have a second baby, and the same procedure is played off one more time, and at 31 she closes choice for the last time and never has to think about it again. Would women accept this? Uh, we've run tests with uh, students at the University of Amsterdam, and after discussion, eight out of ten said that this would be their ideal way of contraception, if we can prove it's safe, which is, of course, a point I will get back to. Let's look at a, li a little more detail. So again, we see the womb, the vagina, the fallopian tubes, and so we're going to use a hysteroscopical uh, instrument. So basically, again, as was talked about earlier, there will be no cuts, no incisions. We go through the vagina into the womb and place these valves at the entrance of the fallopian tubes into uh, the womb. Now we see that we've got this little valve implanted there, and we see that sperm and ovum are separated. Menstruation is normal, there are no hormones involved, and the eggs that are coming against this barrier are basically reabsorbed by the body, just as happens when a woman is sterilized. And just as if a woman is successfully recanalized, as it's called, so that the channel is opened up again, the whole thing resumes its natural function. Now we go to the moment that she decides to change it around. So we see an antenna, outside of the body, and it begins to pump energy into the little antenna around the cylinder. And this is a slow process, and to our uh, surprise, we found out that women actually liked the fact that it was slow. 
because they were very afraid that somebody with a mobile phone could actually change the system around. <laughs> be assured that will not be possible. <laughs> and so, now it's open, huh? and the whole thing resumes its normal function. So, how are we going to test if this is safe? We've had this incredible offer from Professor Malise Bongers of the MUMC here. She operates women who have to lose their womb for uh, non-pressing medical reasons. So, these are planned operations. We're actually going to ask these women to have choice implanted in their womb for a couple of months before it is taken out, so we can actually see how it works within the body. Um, We've already, after getting publications of, uh, of this new method, we already have uh, uh, 12 women who have offered to uh, be uh, test persons for this whole system. So that's how uh, enthusiastic some women are about this. The vision of this whole project is that choice will be for all. We know that the first ones we will make and we believe we will need about four years to do it, will be for, uh, let's say, relatively affluent women who will buy a lot of freedom with this. But the point is, it's electronics. So, of course, economies of scale kick in, and then the whole thing will become cheaper and cheaper, which in the end is the real reason of doing this, most of all, is that we can have these mobile clinics roaming around the poorest places on Earth, and in one morning, an entire village, all the women there will get the control over their family planning. So, this is my daughter, who is and still is and was very much desired, and we're here in the living wilderness of Alaska. Thank you.